Hello and welcome to this film which is all about dipole-dipole forces and these are the second type of intermolecular force that we're going to look at in the high level bonding topic. Hopefully by the end of this film you'll understand why polar molecules will attract each other by means of permanent dipoles. Now there's a contrast here between permanent dipoles and the instantaneous dipoles that we looked at in the dispersion forces film. And we'll remember that these molecules will also exhibit dispersion forces and that in actual fact the dispersion forces might end up being stronger than the dipole-dipole forces, or at least it might seem that way. Okay, now we said in the film about dispersion forces that all molecules will have dispersion forces between them. Okay, that's because all molecules have an electron cloud and that electron cloud is prone to moving about the place in, ran in a random way. However, if you've got two atoms that are joined together that have different electronegativities, then the bond between them, as we should know by now, will be polar. That means the charge in that bond will be permanently unevenly distributed. Okay, so in the case of a hydrogen chloride molecule, which we've got here, because chlorine is much more ele electronegative than hydrogen, that is to say it pulls the electrons towards itself more than hydrogen does, the chlorine will end up always being slightly more negative than the hydrogen. There will be an electron cloud maybe that is, you know, shaped like this, with more down at the chlorine end than at the hydrogen end, and this can still wobble about in a random way, but overall there will always be a net negative charge over this end because of the increased or the higher um, electronegativity of chlorine. Okay? The next door hydrogen chloride molecule will also have that same type of permanent dipole. And because this lasts forever, it gives rise to a stronger kind of intermolecular force than that which is created by instantaneous dipole. So normally we think of dipole-dipole forces as being stronger than dispersion forces. Okay, so here is our dipole-dipole force. Remember this is an intermolecular force, not an intramolecular bond. Okay, and it's caused by the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms. Now, if that's what causes um, dipole-dipole forces to arise, that is to say polar bonds and polar molecules, then we should be able to decide by looking at the shape of our molecule and what atoms are in it, we should be able to decide whether any particular bo uh, molecule has polar bonds and whether it's polar overall and therefore whether it will have dipole-dipole forces. Once again, I'll just say this again because it really is important, if you can't draw the electron dot diagram for a molecule and you therefore can't decide its shape and its polarity, you won't know what kind of intermolecular forces it has. So really important. But anyway, at the risk of labouring that point, I'll um, I maybe not mention it again. I might mention it <laughs> once more in that um, in the next film. But anyway, this next slide kind of asks the question: Are dipole-dipole forces always stronger than dispersion forces? And I think the question is perhaps slightly badly phrased. But let's compare these three hydrogen halides that we see here. Okay, then they are hydrogen chloride hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide. Now if we uh, put, uh, let me just uh, draw those again because I wanted the hydrogen chloride at the top. If we put hydrogen chloride at the top and hydrogen bromide next, although we don't, and hydrogen iodide at, at the bottom, although we don't know much about electronegativity at the moment, we will discover in the periodicity topic that chlorine is the most electronegative element out of these three. So if I wrote electronegativity is increasing in this direction, then I ought to expect this molecule to be the most polar of these three, because they're all each one of the halogens is attached to the same atom. So in other words, how far over towards the halogen the electrons are will depend on the electronegativity of the halogen and not a lot else. So if this is the most electronegative one, we ought to expect this molecule to be most polar. So polarity is also increasing and therefore the strength of the dipole-dipole forces is also increasing. All right? However, if we look down this way, we're getting more and more electrons. 
So the number of electrons is increasing in the reverse direction, which means that the dispersion forces will be getting greater and greater. As we can see from this chart of boiling points, although it doesn't say it's a boiling point graph, if we look at the boiling points of these four substances, what we can see is that hydrogen iodide has the highest boiling point of all three. We'd expect, based on the dipole-dipole forces, for it to have the lowest boiling point of all three. But what we can see is not necessarily that the dispersion forces are stronger than the dipole-dipole forces, but that the difference in dispersion forces between hydrogen chloride and hydrogen iodide outweighs the difference in polarity between these three molecules. Okay, So it can sometimes look as though dispersion forces are winning out against dipole-dipole forces. It's not useful to think of dispersion forces as being stronger than dipole-dipole forces because they really are only around for just a fraction of a second, whereas dipole-dipole forces, which come about as a result of permanent dipoles, are permanent. They're always there. Anyway, as I say, and as I've said before, you must know the shape of a molecule to decide whether it's polar or not, and therefore whether um, it's going to have dipole-dipole forces. If you can't draw electron dot diagrams, that's impossible. But this film focused on why polar molecules will attract each other by means of permanent dipoles, and looked at how we might try and compare the variance of permanent dipoles with the variance of dispersion forces. Hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, or if you've got any other comments to make, then please feel free to post on YouTube or to come and see me and let me know.